On October 15, 2003, a space shuttle is about to leave Earth for space. On board is a Chinese astronaut, Yang Liwei, the first Taikonaut to fly in space. While in the middle of a space mission, the man is about to experience one of the strangest and probably most frightening moments of his life. Make yourself comfortable, today we'll take you further behind the clouds. How about a star path tour? 3, 2, 1, launch immediately. Yang Liwei was only about 30 years old at the time when he was recognized as China's first astronaut, also known as a Taikonaut. A former combat pilot in the Air Force of the Chinese People's Liberation Army, he was selected as an astronaut candidate in 1998, and then trained for space flight. He rose through the ranks to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, the same rank he held on his first mission as a Major General in 2008. On October 15, 2003, Yang Liwei embarked alone on the Shenzhou 5 spacecraft, the fifth flight of the Chinese Shenzhou space program, and the first flight to carry a Chinese astronaut. The spacecraft was propelled into space by the Long March 2F rocket for a mission that lasted a total of 21 hours. During his short stay, the Chinese astronaut said he heard what sounded like violent blows to the fuselage of his spacecraft. He said he was very nervous when this happened. When the noise was heard, Yang Liwei went to the hatch of his spacecraft to try to find the cause. But he didn't notice anything unusual, which only increased his anxiety. On October 16, 2003, he came back from his space flight in a state of turmoil. Although he had just spent 21 hours in space, slept for only 40 minutes, and circled the Earth 14 times, he hadn't left his head in the clouds. He knew that it had happened and that it was not a figment of his imagination. The man who had become a hero in China had told his successors about this phenomenon so that they would not be surprised if it ever happened to them. Especially so that they wouldn't worry about it, and that's exactly what happened. Even though Yang Liwei said that this phenomenon did not happen again during his stay, the astronauts of the following missions Shenzhou 6 and Shenzhou 7 confessed to having heard a strange noise, which only confirmed what Yang said. He even tried to produce the same sound in front of his technical crew, using instruments so they could solve the mystery. But it was not until 13 years later, in an interview with China Central Television, that the Chinese army colonel stated publicly that a sound out of nowhere had occurred during his trip aboard his shuttle Shenzhen 5 in October 2003. He also stated that he was certain that the sound did not come from outside or inside the spacecraft. When asked to describe the sound, he said that it was similar to the sound of a wooden stick against a scrap metal bucket. It sounded hollow and produced slight echoes. Did Li Wei's shuttle brush past a meteorite? Was it a hallucination by the astronaut? Or was it just a bad joke? The craziest theories had been imagined at the time. Since then, having failed to find a plausible explanation for the phenomenon, this experiment continued to torment the astronaut, as well as other scientists who wanted to find a rational answer. A mystery solved. While the cause of these strange sounds was still unknown until now, the mystery seems to have recently been solved. Well, we hope so. In fact, what intrigued the scientists was not the noise, but rather where it came from since drive. Yang's spacecraft was all alone miles away from Earth. Since there is no support for sound at that level, space must have been infinitely silent. As Professor Go Sher Hyung, an expert in space engineering at the National University of Singapore explained so well on the BBC channel, the journey of sound travel requires a medium, be it air particles or water molecules or metal, solid atoms, he said. He said that if there was a noise like that, there must have been a solid, physical object nearby, and there was nothing but Liwei's ship. He points out, however, that this theory remains a mere speculative supposition. The astronaut's colleague, Wee Sang So, believes that this could have been the result of an expansion or shrinkage of the spacecraft since the temperature outside the spacecraft could vary within the orbit. After much reflection on the subject, astronaut Yang Liwei finally declared during a meeting with students in the city of Ningbo, Zhejiang province, that this strange noise was probably related to pressure variations. These would have deformed the outer hull of the spacecraft when it left Earth. A theory that was later confirmed by Lu Han, a scientist specializing in the space world, who wrote a very interesting article on the subject. According to her, the sounds that Yang Liwei heard could only come from tiny deformations in the capsule materials. Lu said that similar phenomena had been reported on a previous mission and that the astronauts had thought that someone was knocking outside. But of course, there was no one. 
It was then discovered that the change in temperature that was taking place was causing variations in air pressure. It was the pressure difference between the inner and outer walls of the vessels that caused these deformations, which in turn produced noise. And as this specialist so aptly put it, unless there are rational and scientific explanations for strange phenomena, which scientists may encounter while exploring the unknown, we must look for them and find them, and this is precisely what advances science. Do you think that explanation makes sense? Did you find this story strange? Well, here are a few others, even more unusual, which happened in weightlessness. The strange music the Apollo 10 astronauts heard. Nearly 40 years after Apollo 10's journey, NASA revealed that it had recorded some kind of music, which the crew of Apollo 10 had heard in May 1969, when they flew over the dark side of the white star. Yes, we make it clear that it was music and not sound. The Apollo 10 crew, consisting of Commander Thomas Stafford, Flight Control Module Pilot John Young, and Lunar Module Pilot Eugene Cernan, was on a test flight. Before the long-awaited first trip to the moon in July 1969 by Neil Armstrong on the Apollo 11 mission. On that day, the three crew members had no contact with the Earth when a strange noise similar to a melody or a hissing sound appeared. Their spacecraft. Flying over the dark side of the moon, was at that moment exactly 1,500 meters above the Earth. The three astronauts found the phenomenon so strange that it could affect their credibility with their superiors if they had to talk about it when they returned. They had debated whether or not to report it to the control center, fearing that the discovery would make them look like they were not serious, or that it might jeopardize their chances of participating in future missions. Finally, the soundtrack, which lasts almost an hour, was recorded and transmitted to the control center in Houston, Texas. It wasn't until a few decades later that NASA decided to dust off its archives and make it public. Indeed, this shocking revelation about the famous strange melody was only recently published by NASA. It was revealed on the American cable channel Discovery, in a program called The Unexplained Files of NASA. Although it is very tempting to think that this music may have an alien origins, NASA confirms that it is not. A space agency engineer said in an interview that the radios in the two ships, the lunar module, and the command module, which were attached, could certainly interfere with each other and create a kind of music. An explanation that was later questioned by several other astronauts. What do you think it could have been? She wanted to talk about an alien phenomenon but she collapsed. Come on. Back to Earth. This time no question of staying in the moon. Hyde Marie Martha Stephanishan Piper is an American astronaut who worked at NASA. She was at the time the only astronaut on the Atlantis crew during mission STS-115. Her main task was to take over the assembly of the International Space Station. During this mission, Hyde Marie Martha Stephanishan Piper made a phenomenal discovery, at least that's what she let on. On September 22, 2006, the 43-year-old astronaut returned from a long trip into space. During the return to Earth ceremony at Ellington Field in Houston, Hyde Marie Martha Stephanishan Piper was stunned twice during the press conference she was giving to reporters in the room. Just as the astronaut was addressing an incident that occurred during the flight, in her opinion, she had witnessed an alien phenomenon and wanted to testify to it publicly and in detail. After getting up for the first time with the help of her colleagues, the medical services took her out through an emergency door during the second malaise to have her examined, as this time she had just lost consciousness. A news release later stated that his condition was not worrisome and that the astronaut did not need to be taken to hospital. The flight surgeon who examined her had explained that the astronaut was experiencing the effects of the transition from weightlessness to Earth's gravity. Anyway, we are of course happy that she has nothing, but we will not know more about this famous alien discovery since Hyde Marie Martha Stephanishan Piper had not been able to continue her testimony. What did she observe on her trip? Did this discomfort have anything to do with what she had seen? Or it was pure coincidence? The mystery remains. However, it should be noted that loss of consciousness in astronauts is not that rare. Approximately one in three astronauts are subject to discomfort upon their return to Earth. When they are in the middle of a mission, the absence of gravitation causes bodily fluids to migrate to the upper part of the body, which is quite natural. They then submerge the chest and head, which tends to cause migraines and feelings of heaviness. The organs then double in size and the body releases calcium and blood plasma. This leads to a decrease in the production of red blood cells. 
Once on Earth, the blood flows into the rest of the body, freeing the brain and all the other organs that were hitherto heavily irrigated. This then causes discomfort. Fortunately, these are temporary and do not cause majors. This is why we still hope that Hyde Marie Martha Stefanischen Piper can finally reveal what she witnessed during her mission in September 2006. Even though 14 years have passed in the meantime, it is never too late to know the truth. So, did you find these stories strange? Which one intrigued you the most? Give us your opinion in the comments.